Good morning. Good morning. My name is Phil Smith. Can you tell me your full name, please? My full name is Leonardo Bellomo. And can you tell me where you're from? I'm from Italy. I come from Venice. Can I see your identification, please? Yes. Thank you. That's fine. Now, in this part, I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself. Tell me about your hometown. What do you like most about your hometown? My hometown is really, really nice. It's the one I think it's one of the most beautiful city in the world, and so I, I like very much everything. And but probably um, I, I like more uh, the corner that are um, less popular because um, all all the city is uh, every time in every period of the year full of tourists. So sometimes it could be quite difficult to to move and to have a normal life. But in the other, in this corner, less popular, it's easier, and they I think they are nicer. And has Venice changed much in recent years? Uh, the change he doesn't really change. The problem, the only change is that every year we have more tourists. So it's it's going to become. Um, uh, every year, uh, a more touristy play, place, and um, it's going to, and less people are live inside Venice. Are living inside Venice. That's that's the changement. Let's talk about photos now. Yeah. Um, how often do you take photos? Uh, I usually I um, take photo when I'm I'm on on the uh, on, I'm going to do a trip, and so I'm going to I'm watch new places. And I, I'd, I'd like to to, to photograph uh, what what I see to to rem to remember all the place I saw after when when I'm come back home. Do you prefer taking photos of people or places? Of people, because I think if you want to have the photograph of a place, you can go on the website or you can um, buy a postcard. But what what you can't have it's, it's a picture of this place and uh, the people uh, that you know there in this place so that's more important and more yeah more important also for your memories because yes the place the, the picture of the place are mm. always available what do you do with the photos you take uh, with my photos I think I, I put um, the photo in my laptop and sometimes when I I have some free time. I have the the, um, the desire to to remember something. I, I I start to to watch again the photo and to because they can remind me my past holiday. And uh, do you think the way people take photos is changing? Uh, yeah, of course. After the um, after the digital camera, uh, the people take photo and picture of every corner, all, also of the stupid corner or the things that are not so important because uh, it's not uh, it's not expensive to take a picture like before the digital camera so we have a lot a lot of picture that are completely unuseful <laughs> let's talk about free time now yes. how much free time do you normally have uh, it depends from the period of my life because um, I used to study uh, at the university I finished um, two months uh, uh, ago, and uh, it depends from the period because when I have my exam, I'm I don't have so much free time because I spend more of my days studying. But in the in in the other uh, period when I have only the lesson, I have the afternoon or the morning free. So yes. So what do you like doing best in your free time? Uh, I'd like very much to reading reading books. Or watch a movie, or spend my time with my friends, going out to uh, drink something, going to some club or pubs. Mm. Yeah. And have your leisure activities changed much since you were young? Uh, I think not so much. Probably the, when when I was a child, I used to read different kind of books and I used to watch different kind of movie. And but but more or less, I think my the activities I like are the same. Thank you. 
Now, I'm going to give you a topic, and I'd like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. Before you talk, you'll have one minute to think about what you're going to say. You can make some notes if you wish. Do you understand? Yes. Right, here's some paper and a pencil for making notes. Thank you. And here's your topic. I'd like you to describe a situation when someone you didn't know helped you. Okay. All right. Remember, you have one to two minutes for this, so don't worry if I stop you. I'll tell you when the time is up, and can you start speaking now, please? Okay. Um, the situation I'm going to tell happened when I was a child. I was, I think, something like five years old, and I was on holiday with my parents in Sardinia, in the island, Italian island. I was on the beach, and uh, it was evening, seven, probably at... The, the last last hour of the afternoon, seven o'clock, and I was playing on the beach. Uh, I was running uh, in one direction and after in the other direction, and I got lost. And uh, it it was very difficult for me to f to find again my my parents because the the, the beach was um, really really long and. Um, Every part of the beach was pretty similar, so it was uh, difficult to find exactly the place in which my parents were. So I, I walked, I walked, I walked a lot, and finally I found a couple of um, two boys. I don't remember now, probably one boy, two, two, one boy and one girl. I don't remember exactly their age, but probably they are young, they, they were young. And uh, they they started to help me, and I say, how oh, how old are you? What, what what are you doing here? You are alone in this beach, and I I told them that I was lost, and so they they helped me. They take my they took my hand. They hold my hand, and um, we we walked together in uh, in this beach, and finally, we found the place in which there were my parents, but. Um, because I, I, I used to take holiday with a camper, and I, I saw the camper of my parents, and I start to run. Okay, thank you, Leonardo. Can I have the booklet and paper and pencil back, please? We've been talking about a situation when someone you didn't know helped you, and I'd like to discuss with you one or two more general questions related to this. Let's consider, first of all, children helping others. Um, what kind of things can children do to help in the home? Uh, I think uh, probably the, the first thing is being tidy and uh, don't uh, throw their toys in every kind of the... the um, of, in, every, in every corner of the house because, uh, yeah, it's uh, less work for the for their parents so this is the first thing and maybe after then when they uh, grow up a little bit they can help with the um, to prepare the um, uh, the table for the dinner or they can uh, start to tidy their room and yes i think this is a, the most how can children best learn to be helpful to others I think probably uh, one of the most important things is having a model and so um, obviously the, the, the first model for the children are their parents. So if the children see their parents and see that they are helpful people, they can learn to be helpful as well. I think so the most important is I have, and after yes, the education, the, the, the parents must have to must teach to their t children that it's important to be helpful with the other people and yes okay so what ways can school encourage children to help in the community uh, i think uh, the school can can encourage children uh, maybe um, show the different way 
in which they can help and the different association in which maybe not in the school but in their free time the children can um, can can help join this association and uh, after try to explain in the with some example the importance of helping people right let's talk now about working for other people without payment mm -hmm. um, what types of voluntary work are most popular in Italy uh, I I don't know actually I don't know exactly the most popular but I uh, I'm sure that there are some voluntary association for helping old people for helping people who is now in jail I know that because my grandmother work is the president of a kind of this kind of voluntary association so they they teach to them to the people who are in jail and they try to help them after they come out to find a job and to to live uh, in the society without a uh, problem to integrate better in the society mm. now you said your grandmother helped yeah. um, is it normally older people who do voluntary work or do all ages do voluntary work um, I think all ages but probably when you when the people are retired they have more free time and they so they it's it, probably most of the people are are older after mm. they, they stop to work and so how do individuals benefit from doing voluntary work I think uh, the individual benefit because you when you help another people you have a really really good feedback because you you, you understand that you are useful for, for somebody and that what you do it's important and so you, you can you can feel better with yourself and you can find a reason of yes of uh, your your day your life okay. In which ways can voluntary work improve life for the community? Uh, I think that voluntary work can improve the life of the community because it can offer a lot of service for the um, people who need more help, for the poorest people or for the old people or for the people who have some difficulties to live in, in the society. So it can be... Um, really really useful because sometimes the, the the government or the country don't offer this kind of services and uh, we need other association that do this kind of work and they can they can uh, make uh, a, a better place to live the society on a corner of the city or yeah thank you thank you very much that is the end of the speaking test